Good evening all, and welcome. Tonight we're going to be taking a tour into the paranormal realm. So get comfortable, and let the darkness take control. This first story happened in Mexico, when my parents, sister and nieces and I were finally able to visit our family there about four years ago. We were at my great aunt's house, and her and her three adult children were also there. They have a two-story home where they run a small mechanical repair shop from the first floor and mainly reside on the second with the exception of the living room and bathroom being on the first floor with the shop. When you take the stairs onto the floor above, you immediately enter the open area for the kitchen, where they have a small bar seating area at the top of the stairs and landing and the dining room with a large dining table. I was sitting on the bar stool closest to the stairs. My younger sister was sitting next to me and my two older sisters were standing across the bar from me. My parents, great aunt and my aunts and uncles were all sitting across the dining room table. My sisters and I were all chatting and laughing and everyone was having a great time enjoying good company. When suddenly I feel like someone grabbed me from behind in a bear hug manner and I felt my body slightly tilt back into the hug. I chuckled and quickly turned around, thinking I must not have heard whoever walked up the stairs and hugged me, only to find there was no one standing behind me. It didn't feel like a threatening presence, but I immediately tried to debunk it by rocking the bar stool, thinking I must have unbalanced on there, or something, but it didn't rock. By this point, my sisters are all looking at me funny and asking what I'm doing, and I just tell them I felt someone hug me from behind and felt myself tilt back into the hug, and they just looked at me like I was weird. I stepped out of their courtyard, which was directly connected to the kitchen and dining room, to get some fresh air, and had only been out there for a minute or two when my mum came out and says, Is it true? You felt someone hug you from behind the top of the stairs? I told her that that's what it felt like, and that I might need some fresh air. My mum's eyes immediately start to water, and she said, I think that was your great uncle. He used to do that to everyone who was sitting there whenever he came upstairs from the shop. She then made me come inside, and my great aunt and my aunt and uncles were all starting with tears in their eyes. My great uncle passed away about 10 years ago prior to that happening. I'd only met him once when I was four, which was 20 years prior to this trip. They said that my great uncle must have wanted to say hi to us and let us know how happy he was to see everyone together. This next story happened about seven or eight years ago when I was spending the night with my boyfriend now husband. Michael was living with his brother and sister-in-law and their two kids to help them out financially since they were struggling a bit with the expenses of a toddler and a new baby. I would go over to help watch the kids while their parents went to work and try to help them with childcare. This particular night, the kids' parents had to work the late shift, so it was extremely late around 2am by the time they got home. By the time they arrived, I was feeling too late to drive the 10 minutes to my parents' house, so I just stayed to spend the night there with Michael. The room was kind of small, and Michael had his bed pushed up against one wall, so the head and one side of the mattress touched the wall. He had a nightstand next to the bed, and also had a small recliner in the corner of the room that was basically all he could fit in there because of how small the room was. He was sound asleep, and when I came into the room, snoring and all, sleeping on the side nearest the wall was Michael. I have trouble falling asleep to begin with, but that night was extra difficult because I kept feeling very uncomfortable as I felt as if someone was staring at me when I was trying to fall asleep. As much as I tried, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. I was beyond exhausted, especially after dealing with a toddler and a newborn and I just wanted to sleep. But every time I started dozing off, something kept telling me to wake up and remain alert. After about 20 minutes, I finally decided that I absolutely had to fall asleep and pulled the covers up to my face where only my eyes and upwards were uncovered. Within 30 seconds of me doing that, Michael suddenly sits up and shouts, She's here, she's here, get the light! And reached around me to get his phone from the nightstand to illuminate the room. 
The screen lights up, and he's moving the phone around the room and no one's there. I'm freaking the hell out asking him, who, who's here? He sets the phone back down and tells me, nothing, never mind, go back to sleep, and promptly lays back down and says nothing else after that. I am in full blown what the hell mode, and turn on the light to reveal the empty bedroom with just me and him and his bedroom furniture in it. I turn the light off and lay there terrified, eventually allowing my exhaustion to knock me out until my alarm rings for me to get up for work a few hours later. Michael goes to work and I head home to get ready for work, but send him a message that we need to talk about what happened the night before. He tells me he doesn't remember and tried to blow me off. Later that night, we met up for dinner and I again ask about the night before. When he sighs heavily and says, I don't know who it was. All I know is that I saw her standing at the foot of the bed, reaching to take the covers off your face to get you. He had been asleep and snoring the whole time and the room was pitch black. He couldn't have known that I had the covers up to my eyes that night. Needless to say, I never slept in that house again. This is my mother's story, and I believe her. It's about a creature she used to call the Night Mother. In the late 60s slash early 70s, she moved with her family to her grandmother's house in Rhineland, Germany. The house was big and old, a classy ghost house with a big garden and farmland they had to work on. The grandmother was a mean creature. My grandparents had seven children, one of the boys, the eldest, who got his own room and six girls who had to share the other. The girls were between the ages of four and 12. That's when it all started. They all claim that at nights, when they would lie in bed, two of them sharing one, a woman dressed in black would visit their room. She would stand at the foot of each bed, sometimes tugging at them a little bit closer with the blankets and watching them. She had skeletal fingers, but never spoke to them. It wasn't every night, but it was quite regular, and they were all scared to death every time it happened. No one moved or said anything, just stared at her. A few of the younger ones would be already asleep. They gave her the name Abendmutter, which in German translates to Night Mother. And they say that they didn't have the feeling that she was evil, but more protecting. Of course, they were scared of her because who wouldn't be? One aunt remembers that in the first night she whispered, can you see that too? To her sister, who nodded. They can't remember if they ever tried speaking to her. When they told their parents, it was pushed off as a nightmare and no one really cared at the time. Everyone was working 12 hour days, even the children often helping them. Every one of my aunts remembered this story and they don't talk about it often and feel uncomfortable when I asked about it as a kid but they are all 100% convinced it occurred. I tried a lot of explanations, mass hallucinations, their grandmother dressing up and being a psychopath torturing her grandchildren, maybe coping with a the trauma they all shared together, but I can never really be sure what they saw or why. It was last year around summer when this happened. My sister and I were in the same bed and we had one of our windows slightly open because it was very hot in the night. I remember it being about half one in the morning. I was awake and getting a drink from my bedside table when I heard it, scratching at my door. At first I thought it was my mother or father because they tend to say goodnight to us, but then I realized they were both in bed. So I naturally panicked. And while I panicked, the scratching continued louder and louder. It sounded like long fingernails being dragged on the wooden door and it got deeper, then louder, until it just stopped. Again last year, my sister was in my bed, and for context, I sleep with a nightlight as I'm terrified of the dark. My bathroom is directly in front of my bedroom door across the landing. So I wake up around two in the morning and I need to go to the toilet. I make my way across the landing and leave the toilet light off because my nightlight was barely lighting the room. I sit on the toilet when I see it a blank face peeking out of the door looking at me. It had no eyes, no mouth, 
but I could see a nose and short hair. It was just watching me go to the toilet. I sprinted out, woke my sister, and tried to show her the entity, but when I brought her, it was gone. And it still freaks me out to this day. I live in a small country town in the Irish Midlands. I went to a secondary school about 20 miles away from home, in the main town of the county I live in. So naturally I made a lot of friends that side of the county and hung out there as I got older. Fast forward after finishing school for good. In my late teens, I used to go out at the weekends and hang out with my mates and get drunk. We would mostly go to any metal gigs that were in pubs and such, as that was the scene we were into. There was one bar that we used to frequent quite a bit that was located in the cellar of an old orphanage that was renovated into apartments some time ago. Sadly, there was a tragic history an incident that happened in the orphanage in the early 1940s, which saw a fire break out and the loss of more than 30 lives, all of them young girls. The reason that the orphans were not evacuated from the fire was because the nuns didn't think it decent for the girls to be seen in their nightgowns, so they were locked inside as members of the public tried to put out the fire. The poor children perished, the nuns survived. So I know one of the guys who worked in this cellar bar, and one night he told me that in the back cooler room where they kept their beer kegs, he and other staff could sometimes smell smoke and feel a bit dizzy, even though there was no fire or smoke to be seen. He even had an electrician and firefighter friend come in to check it out, along with the premises owner, but there was no fault in electronics or carbon monoxide to be found. This did only happen every now and again, but he found it quite eerie that this part of the cellar bar happened to once be the orphanage basement laundry room from which the tragic fire started some 60 plus years earlier. Another thing I feel I should add to this story, and something that I experienced for myself, is a known fact that echoes of screams can be heard at night from inside the apartment rooms. Remember, the upper stories of the orphanage were renovated into accommodation. A few years ago, I was staying with a different friend who lived in one of the apartments, and I was sleeping on his couch during the early hours. I swear to God, I started to hear faint screaming and shouting in my sleep, but I had some weird filter to it, as if the noise was coming from a TV or radio outside in the hallway. I was pretty stoned, so I opened my eyes and lay there, to see if I could hear it again, but to no avail. Now, at that stage, I obviously knew about the strange smoky smells from the cellar bar, but I had no idea about people hearing any screams, and so I passed no remarks on it. The next day, I told my friend what I thought I heard, and he confirmed it for me. He said that although he never heard any screams from his apartment, he had heard it only once from his neighbor's room, and that it seemed to be coming from either the hallway or outside in the back courtyard. Hearing this made me sad and got me thinking about the girls. I didn't mention any names of places out of respect, but details of the orphanage fire can quite easily be found on the internet, and only one of many terrible things that the Irish Catholic Church has gotten away with in the past. We rented a large house, each evening, my wife and I would take our daughter upstairs for a bath and put her to bed. I stayed downstairs, spending a couple of hours on my laptop before going upstairs myself. For three years, nothing unusual happened. Then one November evening, when my wife and daughter had retired upstairs, and I was on the laptop, the room went icy cold, and I began to shiver. I had a sensation that someone was standing right behind me, staring straight at the back of my head. For several minutes, I struggled to turn and looked behind me, but I was paralyzed. It remained like this for a few minutes, and then the temperature suddenly returned to normal and I could move. There was nothing behind me. I didn't mention anything to my wife about my experience. The same events then occurred for the next three evenings. Still, I said nothing. On the fourth evening, after my wife had gone upstairs, instead of opening up my laptop, I sat on the sofa watching TV from this position, and from this position I could view the entire living room. 
After a few moments, I became aware that there was a translucent figure of a young girl, aged around six or seven, with long blonde hair and dressed in night clothes. At first, I thought it was my daughter, but she has dark brown hair. The figure stood looking into the room for several minutes, then turned and walked down the hallway and vanished into the kitchen. The atmosphere was one of calm. I got up and followed her into the kitchen, but she had gone. I decided to go to bed and still didn't say anything to my wife for fear of upsetting her. The next evening I was on the sofa and once again the little girl appeared and stood silently just looking into the room. And once again she turned, walked down the hall and vanished. When I woke up the next morning, I decided I had to tell my wife and began by saying that there was something I needed to talk to her about. Without any further prompting, she said to me, was it about the little girl? Had she seen her too? Yes, often. I told her she could stay as long as she didn't cause a nuisance. I said that I thought her appearances were gonna increase for some reason. My wife, who was quite religious, said she thought she would say some prayers to tell the little girl it would be okay for her to leave us. And after this, we never saw her again. There was also a strange ending to this story. About six months later, my work contract finished and we were moving away from this house. I called the landlord and he came over as we were leaving to settle up the paperwork and so forth. During our conversation with the landlord, he mentioned that we were his longest renters and that most people left after a few months. I joked that it might be because his house was haunted and related our story. The landlord then told us he had originally designed and built this house for his young family. But when their youngest daughter was six, she had woken up one night and climbed over the stair railing and fallen to her death onto the stone floor below. The family was so distraught, they moved out and rented their home rather than selling it. The landlord said his wife had never set foot in the house for the next 15 years, right up until her death previous November. I reminded my wife that it was November when we first began seeing the little girl, and we now believed she had come in search of her mother. We felt that after saying prayers, we helped them to meet up and pass over to the other side. Before these events occurred to us, I was highly skeptical about the paranormal. My position was, show me proof. When my wife corroborated that I had seen and described exactly the same little girl, I was very careful not to prompt her in any way or try to influence her story. The complete similarities could not be explained by coincidence. Then when the landlord told us about his daughter again, without any hinting from us, it was yet another level of proof for me. Two things stand out for me in this experience. One is that not only did I visually see the little girl, but I also was aware of her from some other internal sense that I'd never noticed before or experienced since. I think maybe we have a deeper unconscious feeling with which we can experience the paranormal. The second thing of interest was that despite being in the presence of an unworldly experience, it was not the slightest bit terrifying. In fact, the sense was of great calmness. I have to rethink my beliefs as a result of these experiences. I'm a 15 year old female. Two years ago, I was waking up to go to school one morning. My mum woke me up and then walked to the other side of my room to grab some clothes out my closet. I was tired, but I woke up pretty quick, though I didn't leave my bed since I was comfortable. I look over and then see an old man standing at the end of my bed. He was old and had a walker. Imagine one of those square ones with the tennis balls at the bottom, except it didn't have tennis balls. And then he started walking around the side of the bed towards me. I might have just been tired, but I wasn't scared at all. And I called out, hello? My mum looked over and asked who I was talking to, to which I reply, the old man. She gets confused and so do I because he's no longer there and moments later we just stop talking about it. The second story is by far the most terrifying thing I've ever experienced. One night I was staying up super late because I had recently gotten a telescope and my dad and I were gonna set it up at midnight and look at the stars. I am in the playroom watching Harry Potter with all the lights off, except for maybe the kitchen light, which was in the room next to the one I was in. The front door was open, but we had a screen door 
that was shut. Everything's fine until suddenly something slams into the screen door and just stands there. I stare at it, unable to move, just scared up my mind. It was dark, but there was enough light where I would have been able to see it if it were an animal or something. But it wasn't. I couldn't see anything but the bulge in the screen. I knew it was tall, probably four to six feet, and it was just standing there. I couldn't see any eyes, but I knew it was watching me. And after what felt like an eternity, but was probably mere minutes, it finally backed away and presumably ran. I was frozen in fear. I ran screaming for my parents who were across the house from me. About a year or two later, I finally realized how dangerous that situation could have been, since the screen door wasn't locked. Whatever that thing was could have just come in and taken me, but it didn't. It elected to watch me and leave. This is my final story. I had just gotten out of the shower room, was staring out the window in my room with my towel wrapped around me. On the other side of my room, I had a shelf thing that instead of shelves, it was just bars. I have this doll. It was like a music box that I got for my first birthday. And it was on one of the shelves when suddenly it began playing. I walked over and when I picked it up, it just stops but it shouldn't have been able to just play because the wind up thing at the bottom was stuck between two of the bars. It never happened again, but I avoided my room that night. I have had to deal with shadow people for a while. My first encounter was before I was nine. My siblings and I shared a room in my two bedroom house. My bed was on the lower bunk, the head of which gave me a pretty good view into the hall. I wake up feeling like someone was watching me. I check the window and kind of just mull around for a bit. I turned over and saw in the frame of the door a dark, shadowy silhouette of a woman. I could see the hall behind it, but her color was that of like when you've fallen asleep, turn on a light and then turn it off. That weird flickering collage of color and texture. I called out, Mom? and I didn't get a response. After a while of just standing there watching me, it left. It didn't feel sinister or good, just creepy and out of place. The next encounter was probably around the age of 11 or 12 at my grandparents' house. I decided to stay in a room I'd never slept in before. It never felt right to me, so I kind of avoided it. The sound was different in the room kind of made my ears feel like they were pressurized. I go to sleep and feel the same creepy, someone's watching me feeling. I check the window. I've never been afraid of the dark or frightened by things in the closet or under the bed. But that night, I was. I checked both multiple times. Finally, I tried to persuade myself to go to sleep and turned the light off. After a while, I opened my eyes and saw two large shadowy figures at the foot of my bed. They both had that same look to them as the woman before. There was definitely outlines of their silhouettes. I could clearly see the dresser opposite me and looked normal in some places, but like there was a dark veil over others. I froze. I wanted to run out the room, but I couldn't get the nerve. I was paralyzed by fear. I began praying and saying phrases that my Pentecostal grandparents told me to do, plead to the blood of Jesus, rebuke Satan, etc. But as much as I wanted to believe the protection of Jesus was upon me, I was terrified and nothing was working. The figures began to grow and the boundaries of the room had no effect on them. They grew as tall as trees and loomed over me. It was like the more afraid I became, the more power they had. Then, at my most terrified, it felt as though someone pours warm honey in my heart. You know those commercials that show how medicines flow through the body? It was like that. The warm and soothing feeling spread through my body, like a ripple of serenity coursed through me. And then they were gone and I fell back asleep. The third time was the most significant event in my life. I believe I developed cancer and a rare infection as a child. I wound up in the ICU and they had to surgically remove the infection, which meant losing an eye. 
I was dying at 14. My body was shutting down. My urine was straight up black. I couldn't eat. I couldn't even go poop. The infection had done something to my nervous system and my legs were temporarily paralyzed. It was looking like the end. One night I was staying with my dad. I was rightfully depressed as hell and really didn't want to talk to anyone. I had spent every day pretending to be happy and holding conversations and dealing with the constant barrage of nurses and doctors every 15 to 30 minutes. I just didn't want to talk. Well, my dad was bored with me because I just wanted to have a pity party. So he got my grandma to come by with her friend. I wasn't in the mood for holy conversations about how God is good and your typical how you doing and hang in there conversations that we had anyway. They bought anointing oil and prayed with me. I closed my eye, the other being a huge infected bubble of decaying flesh at the time, and saw the outline of my room's door. I thought it was strange. Typically, burn-in images kind of drift around that aren't as defined as this, and I tried to wash the image away by moving my eye around, but it stayed where it was. Then the door opened. It didn't open much, just wide enough for the silhouette of a head to pop in. I sat there, shocked in horror and confusion and amazement, that I was watching a shadow person walk through a door in my head. I thought it was death. It was a clear outline of a man, and I watched it walk up to the foot of the bed. I was praying not to die, for forgiveness for the myriad of sins I committed. It reached out his hand towards my face. It stretched from the foot of my hospital bed and touched my forehead. At the exact same time, my grandma anointed my head with oil. I was freaked out. I didn't know what it meant. Was that it? Was I going to live or die? The prayer was wrapped up, and that night I prayed to God to tell me what it meant. I know it's not okay to ask God for validation of what just happened, but I was 13. Surely I could get a little leeway. I woke up the next morning, knowing I wasn't going to die. It was as factual to me as if it had already happened. The family was stoked as well as I, but we didn't know that my life would ever be the same. I would always be disabled and never be able to hide it. The last time I saw them was the day of the surgery to remove the eye. Everyone was on edge. You could feel the adrenaline in the air. Nurses and doctors stream in and out of the room as they prep me for surgery. My family comes to say they love me one last time before I get taken into surgery, and possible death, as it was a pretty vicious infection, and they had to scrape my front brain lobe due to the infection beginning to attack it. It was do or die. I, on the other hand, already knew what would happen. I was going to survive. They gave me some relaxing medication as they unhooked me from my monitors, and I was kind of kicked back and cruising. I began to see shadow people all around my bed, three or four on each side. They were not like the ones I saw at my grandparents' house. They were good. I tried to speak to them a few times, but they didn't respond. I thought it was hilarious that people were walking through them and didn't even realize it. I noticed a white light in the corner of my eye as well. It was like looking at a dimly lit star. You can't really see it when you look directly at it, but if you look to the side of it, you can make it out a bit. It was like the inverse of a shadow person, a light person, sitting in the chair my parents used when they stayed with me. I don't know if it was him or not, but it was comforting to see. I had a black cat called Casper. We adopted her after she ran away from the previous owners. She was missing for days before the previous owners found her in the bushes, skittish and frightened. After carrying her home, the owners discovered she was allergic to cats, when her arm broke out with rashes. The call for a new home came, and was answered by my animal-loving family. For ages, she was too scared to come near anyone, totally adverse to being petted. Eventually, she turned into a total sook never missing the chance to jump on you and lie with you. We loved her, and I loved her heaps. You could feel genuine affection out of that one. Then one day, she lost the use of her back legs. Not long after she passed away, I was having a rough time then, and she was a big comforter. 
Point is, me and my parents were sad. A few days after I'm sitting on my front steps having a smoke, and I hear a meowing sound identical to Casper. I look out front, and there at the gate was a cat meowing at me, that looked just like her. I went over and it ran away. I looked down the street, and it was gone. I mentioned it to my parents and they both said they had the same thing happen to each of them separately, which was a surprise to them too. Now it could have just been a coincidentally similar cat from the neighborhood, but it only happened once to each of us, and then it was never seen again. Plenty of room for more rational explanations, but I choose to think that Casper says thanks before snuggling onto that big belly in the sky. My mum had to put her dog down of 16 years a few years ago. They were absolutely inseparable. They went everywhere together and relied on each other through tough times. It was really hard on my mum. So I came down to visit her and spend some time with her over a few days. My mum was at work until 10pm that night, and I left the house to go pick up something and eat for dinner. I came back in the house at around 8 and stepped into the kitchen. I flick the light on over the sink and start washing some dirty dishes before my mum comes home. All the other lights in the house were off, but we always kept our house locked up as well. As I'm washing dishes, I hear a dog whimper clear as day. I even think to myself, oh, maybe he's hungry or wet. The last year of his life, her dog's health had deteriorated to where he was basically bound in his doggy bed and had to be fed soft food by hand. He was also incontinent and had to be cleaned up regularly. And I tell myself I should go check on him. And that's when it dawns on me that he's dead. I turn off the tap and look back to the living room and again I just hear it, like he used to. But this time it was softer. I turn on all the lights and look around the house for the source of the sound but find nothing. The next day, I hear the sound of his dog nails clicking on the hard wood. But there's no dog in the house. At this point, I'm in a high state of denial. I can't tell my mum about what I'm experiencing because I don't want her falling into a weeping mess. She's experienced a lot of guilt and sadness about having to put him down. So the last night I was there, we were in her bedroom talking. She turns out the light to say she's going to sleep, and I'm lying on the bed and put my head down and tell her I'll go to the sofa in a sec. There's a lull in the conversation for a few seconds and then a whimper as clear as day. She shoots up in bed and turns on the light and says, did you hear that? And looks as though she's on the verge of tears. I sit up and say, yeah, sorry, I, I yawned. I get up and leave. I don't especially believe in ghosts, but this is a situation I cannot explain. I live in a very rural area. The neighbors to my right are a quarter of a mile away and a Mennonite. There are tons of farmland and hills between them and me. The neighbors across from me are older, quiet, and go to bed at about 7 p.m. And the neighbors to my left move out this weekend. I live in a house on a little under an acre of property. Our houses are pretty spaced out along the back road we live on. Not a development, and we don't get many cars through here. Mostly horse and buggies. The corn is high right now, so it dampens noise from other houses, but it's generally quiet around here. I have two kids of two and nine weeks old, and their father lives in the house too. My two-year-old has the first bedroom. My bedroom is next to hers, and the nine-week-old sleeps in my room and their dad has the master bedroom across from my room. The two-year-old's door is always shut when she's sleeping, but the rest of us keep our doors open at night. I've always had anxiety about people breaking into my house, which has never happened to me before, but too many scary movies and TV shows growing up will do that to you. I notice every noise at night. I have a direct view to the master bedroom from my room, and it's very obvious when he gets up to leave his room. At night when everyone is settled in, I've been hearing noises in the walk-in basement, to the point where I have scurried from the living room to the master bedroom to ask their dad to check out the basement. When he goes down and checks, he doesn't ever see anything, 
but he always checks for peace of mind. Last night, I had probably the most heart racing, body shaking, in fear experience. It was about 3 a.m., and I heard a car door shut outside, which is totally out of the norm, but I was like, okay, take a breath. I'm sure the neighbors just needed to get something from the car. So about five minutes later, I got up and peeked out the windows in my room, and I didn't see anyone or anything. I also would be able to see headlights shining through if a car was turned on at my neighbors driving down the road or in my driveway. And about five minutes after that, I heard noises coming from either the master bedroom or the basement, presumably the kid's father doing something. I got up and peeked into the master bedroom, and he was laying on the futon asleep. So I creeped down the hallway to the bathroom and peeked in to see if my two-year-old had maybe wandered out of her room, but she hadn't. So I went back and sat on my bed. Then another five minutes go by, and I hear clattering in the sink, like metal on metal clattering. Sounded like someone was dropping utensils into it. So I jumped up, and my heart started pounding. I was watching the walls to see if I saw any shadows. I finally got the courage to scurry across the hall, and woke up my kid's father. I told him what I'd heard, so he stumbled into the kitchen, me about two feet behind him. No one was there. So I went to examine the sink, and a dirty fork was sitting in it. I had just done the dishes after dessert, so the sink should have been empty, and I was the last person out the kitchen. I walked over to the basement door, and saw it was cracked. I knew I shut it when I came up from doing laundry, so I asked the kid's father if he had left the door to the basement open. He said, yeah, I probably did that when I came back up. I'm pretty sure he was bluffing, because I don't think he went into the basement yesterday at all. So he moved our heavy iron-made kitchen chairs in front of the basement door and locked it. So then I checked out the rest of the house, closets, pantries, bathrooms, and decided it must be in my head. So I sat back down in my room. Then I heard more noises. I heard footsteps coming up and down the basement. Then everything went quiet. I heard a bang on the wall from my daughter's room, which was her just flipping over in her sleep. A few times I heard more noises from the screen to my window. But when I looked out, I saw nothing. Then around 5.15am, I heard a car door shut again which could have just been my neighbor leaving for work, but I didn't see anything when I looked out the window and I heard no more noises. To sum it up, I heard a lot of noises and found a dirty fork in the sink. I didn't see anyone and nothing was disturbed. We have three couches in the basement set up to relax on, my escape spot for the kids. So is it possible someone is breaking through the basement door and somehow sleeping on the couches? I haven't been down there to check as I'm still scared. We have a ring doorbell on the front, but it's been dead for a while, so I'm charging it up tonight. It's more believable to me that it's paranormal activity than a squatter. This area is super safe, and I just don't know or see how or why anyone would be here or do anything in our home. Nothing was taken, but this isn't the first time I've had plenty of nights like this. I'm a 40 year old male, but when this happened, I was 24 years old. It even makes me old to say this, but Facebook hadn't even become popular yet, and I had never heard of MySpace. Well, I started a Facebook account to keep up with my family all over the state, and in other states. Three days after I started that Facebook account, this woman that looked my age sent me a friend request. I thought she was beautiful. So I accepted her request. Soon after we started talking, her name was Tanya. After speaking for a few weeks, we went out on a date. No, this isn't where it gets weird yet. Me and Tanya dated for about a month before I got to meet her two kids. A few weeks later, I met her parents and she met my family. It was going really well with Tanya and it was like a match made in heaven. On the weekends, I would sleep over her house and we would take the kids out to the movies, eat out, and even 
Tinsel State Park. We got along so great, I even got along great with her kids and family. When I talked to her dad if I could marry his daughter, yes, I'm old fashioned, he said that I could. Well, I went and bought the ring, called up Tanya and asked if we could go out to eat the following weekend. This is the part where it starts getting weird. That weekend I was nervous. I couldn't wait and left my house so that I could be on hers on time. But when I got there, it was all boarded up. So I went to her parents' house. Her father asked, can I help you? So I asked what happened to Tanya? What happened to the house? Where were they? Did it catch fire? And he looked at me like I was crazy. He asked how I knew his great, 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 great grandmother. And how did I know the house burnt down? I asked what he was speaking about. And I was saying, no, 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 not your great, 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 great grandma. Your daughter, I have pictures to prove it. And I scrolled through my phone to show him pictures that were supposed to be of me and her. But it turns out they were of just me. And my family never recalled meeting her either. I don't believe in ghosts, but what happened to me in that year changed me. I just don't know. About two years ago, I was in my room reading a book when I hear it. Soft as ever, two little girls giggling. Not just any giggling, it was the kind of giggling you hear in horror movies. I immediately put down my book and listened. After about a minute of holding my breath, I decided it must have come from outside. Then that night, just as I'm about to drift off to sleep, I hear it again. Two little girls, giggling. Now it was 2 a.m., and I was pretty damn sure that there weren't two little girls outside my window at that time of night. So I began to freak out. I sat up in my bed and waited for what felt like forever just listening. Then I hear it again. I jumped out of my bed and go to spend the rest of the night in the guest room. By the next morning, I was convinced my room was haunted. For the next week, I avoided my room and spent my nights in the guest room unbeknownst to my family. I was afraid to tell anyone for fear I was going crazy or they wouldn't believe me. But every time I spent more than an hour in my room, I would hear those two little girls giggle. By the end of the week, I was a mess. I could barely sleep and was terrified of my room. And then one morning, my brother walks up to me and says, you deaf or something? Obviously, I was confused and asked further questions. And he tells me about this small device he would placed in my room. Apparently, it's like some sort of prank device that's easily hidden and can make a variety of different noises. My brother, however, chose the creepy as hell little girl sound. He wondered why I hadn't heard it or said anything about it all week. And I just wanted to punch him in the face. So my room wasn't haunted after all. Moral of the story, sometimes your brother is just an ass. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I do hope that you enjoyed tonight's tales. If of course you did, you can let me know. I'd like to extend a huge thank you to all our members and our patrons, whose names can be seen on screen. If you would like your name and the end credits of every video, feel free to contribute a small amount every month, like $3 or something. It really helps out and, you know, it's a big difference to keeping the channel running. Seriously, thank you everyone. Of course, it's not an obligation, but it does help. Um, what else, what else? Oh yes, thank you for everyone who's been a beta tester. If you wanna be a beta tester for the app, you can do that. Um, I think it's going all right. Um, it's obviously a lot of work and I'm gonna be honest, my dev does do most of it. So a huge thank you to Craig, who's doing 99% of the work. Um, so I can't wait to have this out for everyone. Hopefully you guys like it when it's launched. Anyway, I'm going to leave the video here. I um, will see you tomorrow for even more stories. But for now, stay awesome, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.